Welcome to Material Chef, preparing the most influential materials for your delectation. For thousands of years, this earthy product has been moulded and shaped to satisfy our needs. With a gentle touch and a lot of heat, pottery can be most delightful. Pottery is used to make plates, teapots, bricks, and even your terracotta garden flower pots. Pottery is made from a body which is clay based. Clay can be easily spooned straight from the ground. It is this ease of accessibility that has led to its widespread usage. If you are in the right place, all you have to do is dig into the earth. Scoop the clay onto a plate. If you are making something bigger, such as a house from bricks, you may need a little more clay. Clay's malleability is related to its water content. The higher this is, the easier it is to shape. As you can see, this clay is very juicy. Let's find out how we can change its properties so it holds its form. I use clay as a material because it allows me to shape it in any kind of way because it starts off as a very soft material. But after, the, after glazing it and firing it, it becomes a very hard and durable material. There are different clays out there. Um, I mainly use porcelain, but um, there is uh, earthenware, which is, which is a, a darker clay. Often it can be white, but it is, it is fired lower um, to at a maximum of 1100 degrees. Then there is stoneware, which um, you can fire higher and it, it loses completely um, the porosity. Um, and then there is porcelain, which you can fire up to f uh, 1400 degrees, which uh, becomes the most hard material of the three and is, uh, becomes also translucent when made really thinly. And here are some samples of clay in different frying stages and drying stages for you to have a look at. Let's take a closer look at our samples to find out what happens during firing. Raw clay is made of tiny particles of clay minerals such as kaolin, smectite, illite, vermiculite and impurities such as iron oxides, quartz and magnesium. In raw porcelain, the clay particles are lubricated with water, so it is malleable and easy to shape, and on impact, it just deforms. The clay in the air-dried sample is solid and chalky to the touch. Under the microscope, the particles are close together and no longer surrounded by water, so it can no longer deform and is very weak, shattering into dust when smashed. In the bisque fired sample, fired at 800 degrees, we can see that some impurities have begun to melt together, joining the large particles and making the material much harder. This makes it stronger, so it breaks into fewer pieces and more violently with a higher pitch. In this final example of a matured clay body fired to 1,400 degrees, you can see that the spaces between the particles have been filled by molten impurities, which have melted, bonding the large particles together. This makes the material very hard and strong, so it will survive some impacts. But it is still brittle, so with enough force it shatters, sounding similar to glass breaking. Tune in next week to satisfy your insatiable appetite for knowledge and dig into what makes the materials we use just so special. With the Material Chef brought to you by the Naked Scientists.